Hello, tea timers. Uh, so today I am drinking my Irish breakfast. I'm feeling in the need of a good, strong jolt. I'm about to head into my writing and um, I decided I wasn't gonna uh, get out of my old floppy t-shirt. <laughs> it's real me here, guys. <laughs> I'm zipping along on my book. I'm having, I'm having, a, a, I'm at that point. Sometimes I'm like, oh, oh, just like pushing a boulder up the hill. But right now I'm having no problem getting my three pages every day. Uh, sometimes I write pages and then I have to cut them. I have around, so I've got over, okay, so <laughs> this is what I realized. I got the proof edits from, on the Runaway Heiress. And so I was going through them. And then I, you, sometimes when I go through, then I come back and I find it hard to get back into my story, but I'm so far into this one now that I, the first day back, I wrote three and a half pages, which was like, whoa. Uh, so sometimes you, you struggle just to even get a page and a half. So it's been going chunk and long good. And I hope I'm not jinxing myself by telling you that. But what I noticed is like, okay, you would have thought, I'm gonna tell you, but you would have thought I would have noticed this before. What I noticed is, is that, okay, so in The Runaway Heiress, the main guy, his name is Mick Halford. No, Talford, <laughs> I gotta mix it. Mick Talford, right? So that's great, good name. It took me a long time to find it and choose it and settle it down, settle down on one. So then when I started this one, I was trying to find a good last name for my, my heroine, whose name is Kit, her, her nickname's Kit. Everybody calls her Kit, but her name's Catherine. And I was trying to find a name that felt like a good name for her. So I, you go through. So what I do is I go through surnames, like, you know, look at the 500 surnames most popular in the U.S. or most common, most common or whatever it is, because you aren't choosing it. So I'm going through, going through, and I'm trying to find them, and I'm trying off on different names. And so what I'll do is I'll write down maybe 10 names down, and then I just try different ones until I find one that feels comfortable. So... I finally, I found the name. I like, I, I wrote it down and it's like, okay, oh, Kit. And then I was looking through different, you know, so you look through different, um, different num things too, because you don't want everything to have the same, you know, first, uh, first letter that on your other one. And I find this name and I'm like, oh, and it was the one that just felt right. It felt comfortable. Kit Halford. <laughs> and I've been using it. And I didn't even, I didn't even make the connection that I had Mick Talford on my last book. So I can't have her last name be Halford. So, oh my gosh, but it just felt right. And now I know why it felt so right and comfortable because I'd just done another darn book with the last name Talford. So Halford felt like a really comfortable fit too. So I'm gonna have to change her last name, but I'm not gonna do it now because it'll just throw me off. So I'm gonna, I've made a note down and I'll, I'll find out a good name for her when I finish the manuscript. But you would think, okay, I've got like over 250 pages on the manuscript. I've got another 70 pages that I've written pages on it. And then as the story shifted, had to cut out huge chunks or be like, no, this is going down the wrong path. And I had another whole section where I've, I'd rewritten the start up to like 50 pages, 60 pages, three times. So you think I've written maybe, I don't know, <laughs> I'm like, oh, close to 500 pages. And only now I realize that on Runaway Heiress, it was Mick Talford. And now here we are, and it's Catherine Halford. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's a lot of a writer. Oh my goodness. So I, I'm not sure what she's going to end up being called. I don't even know what the book's going to be called. What I do is I just write down the two lead names. So we have Liam and we have uh, Catherine. So Kit. So I just write that on the top, and then um, and then that's what it is until after I you know give it to my agent and it goes to my editor and you know then then after that after we've done a few an edit or two then we come up with the name. I used to think I had to come up with the name first. No 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 no. <laughs> Oh, and on the other bookish front, um, Estonia has just decided to purchase the my second book, uh, Cliff's Edge. They got Solace Island, and it's not that big of a country, and so it really makes me pleased that enough people uh, like the Solace Island that now the publisher in Estonia wanted to purchase Cliff's Edge. So yay, Estonia! <laughs> 
is. I looked up pictures of it because then I was like, oh, where's Estonia? And then I see it's near Finland and it it was, had, um, was re, before it used to be part of the uh, Russian, the USSR before it got split off and they got to be their own country again. And um, it has this medieval section that looks so beautiful in the pictures. I was like, and did you know, I, I was reading about it. <laughs> I was reading about it. So um, the, the, the majority of people have had a secondary education as well. I think it was something like 80 or 90% of people from 35 to 64 had. Like that's, that's amazing. And all those educated people, there's, an, there's some of them that want to read my books. Woohoo! <laughs> anyway, it made me super happy. Okay, oops, there's my dog. Oh, darn it, she's bang, gonna bang on the door until I come. Okay, so don't go, well, you can go away or you can fast forward. You know, like you can double click on the side. Oh, here she is. Okay, let me go get her, she's banging on the door. Double click on the side, it'll zoop, go fast forward. You guys all probably know that I just learned that. Hold on. Okay, come on in. Okay, you know you are, I've got my, uh, <laughs> I've got my writing pants on. They're a couple sizes bigger than uh, than my normal pants. Um, so when I was running to the door, I had to hitch them up. <laughs> okay, here we go. Don't mind her. She looks very motley because um, she's been having to be subjected to our grooming since uh, the pandemic. But hopefully this is going to be over soon and we will be able to take her to the groomers. Oh my gosh, that'll be so lovely. She'll be happy too. Okay, let's see. Um, Crewman 1992. When is the last time you went to the Academy Award ceremony? Was it when Jen was nominated? Can you uh, tell us about what it's actually like to be there? I hear most of the time people are at the bar and then run back to their seats when they call 30 seconds till we come back. So here, okay, so the thing that most people the, the one thing that I didn't know about the Academy Awards was, well, there's a couple things. First of all, um, by the time the ceremony is over, people are ravenously hungry, like so hungry, because you've got the nerves. If you're nominated, of course, you've got the nerves. So it's very hard. You make yourself eat some breakfast, but it's very hard. And then you're going to be going in the limo and the limo drive, even though it might only be Oh, an hour and a half away because everybody's going, it's going to take hours, like hours to get there. And so there's the practicality of you don't want to drink a lot right before you go because you're going to be stuck in the limo with no bathroom, <laughs> you know, and you're nervous. So you, your stomach's a knot. So maybe you aren't going to be able to eat or once you get into your dress and have your makeup on, you aren't going to mess it up because what if you spill something or drip something on your fancy clothes, right? So once you're ready and in that car, you're stuck for hours. You're stuck for hours, like like literally hours as they slowly, slowly, slowly inch, inch, inch to the big lineup where there's all these cars and limos and fancy SUVs and, and you know, whatever, all stretching out for blocks and blocks and blocks. So you finally get there and you get out. And then if you're nominated, like I've been there a lot of times when I have been nominated, but the one time when I was nominated, it was a bit of a, a shock to the system because you get out and it's like, there's huge crowds of bleachers of people and it erupts and wow. Now, actually recently they have, um, you have to go through security. You didn't have to when I, fir when I first went uh, because they didn't have those kind of worries. And you'll always go by some people with signs saying repent, because, you know, some people believe that Hollywood's bad or whatever. So you'll always go past and protest it. And then you'll have huge, huge bleachers full of fans outside the area and then inside the area. And then people, if you're nominated, people are calling your name, calling your name. And you don't know because nobody gives you lessons on how to walk the red carpet. And, and especially to get nominated, you, you just don't know. So it's all these things and, and you, you, you're trying to look at different places and people with lots of TV cameras and lots of reporters and a whole bank of people taking pictures. So when you get out, it's like a flurry of flashes, flashing, 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 and um, it can make it hard to see. So if you see people and they're smiling and they look a little like, 
what the heck? Especially young people who haven't done it before. Like people have been through it a few times and they're like laughing and joking and they're fine. But if you aren't, if you aren't aware of it, then you, there might be a little bit of a stunned look on one's face because it's like, you can't see. So people are talking, people will be talking to you and stuff, but because of all the flashing, your eyes, it's hard for your eyes to focus. And then you go in and um, you get in your seat and the ceremony is very long. <laughs> it's so, so long. And it's not like the Golden Globes where you have food and drink and alcohol and people are just jumping from table to table. You have your assigned seat and that's where you sit. And yes, I did hear that a lot of people do go to the bar, but because I don't really drink, um, I, I didn't ever go to the bar. Uh, I mean, once in a while, but certainly not uh, at that kind of thing. Um, well, I, I don't really. <laughs> Drink's more of a prop for me. I might drink half a glass. I used to when I was young um, as a way to try to numb, numb myself from the challenges going on. Uh, but then something bad happened and that was it for me in terms of uh, indulging in that way. Actually, ah, oh, gosh, I'd never made that connection. I have something similar happen to um, my my uh, Sarah Raid's birth in the Runaway Heiress, and that's why she stopped drinking. Except for she totally stopped. I just really keep it to one drink. That's it. Um, but something worse happened to her. <laughs> but I, I didn't realize all of a sudden. It's, it's funny how you don't realize until I'm sometimes sitting here and talking to you how my life affects my books that I write. Um, so what was I talking about? Oh, so then you're there and you're so hungry. And if you're wearing a beaded dress, that's another thing that you don't think about when you see all those gorgeous dresses. And when I was in, um, when I was going to award shows and stuff, then the beaded dresses were very in. So there were lots of beads and sometimes there were a cluster of them and it looks so gorgeous and drippy ones and this and that. It looks so gorgeous, but, but <laughs> they're very uncomfortable to sit on for four hours straight. <laughs> when you get home and you take off your dress, you've got all these beaded imprints in your body. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, it's like, it's a little uncomfortable. And those beaded dresses can be incredibly heavy, but you do feel very pretty. And the other thing that they do is there are people who are seat warmers. So there's people who are dressed in black tie because the producers don't want you to ever pan and see empty seats. So whenever somebody gets up from their seat to go to the bathroom or to go to the bar or whatever, there, you'll have a person or two people or however many people got up, scrunch down so they're wa walking like Groucho Marx and they scurry down the aisle like this and excuse me, excuse me. And then they come and they sit, sit down. And I didn't know, I thought it was people being like, oh, you know, when the old days, when I lived in New York and if you bought standing room only, and then if a seat wasn't taken down in the orchestra and you watched and nobody came, that meant they didn't come and you could go down and get that seat and sit there because because why not have a good seat once in a while that would happen other people would do it i actually never went down because i was always scared somebody say what are you doing in my seat young lady <laughs> but other people did that all the time um so i thought it was maybe that so i'm like oh oh no they're here they just went out to go to the bathroom i told the people and they're like no 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 where's this where are the seat warmers and they had a a chain around their neck and a little plastic tag like when you go to a conference and they just flipped it to the back so um, to the back of their thing. So if you're watching the Oscars and you see somebody in a gorgeous gown or wearing a tux and you notice a little chain around their neck, you know, like a little silver thing, then you'll know that they're a seat warmer. And sometimes, you know how there's so many standing ovations? I think a lot of times those standing ovations are because people's butts are getting numb and they're just like so relieved to have an excuse to shoot to their feet <laughs> and stand for a little while. So anyway, that's what it's like. All right, bye-bye.